On the broadcast tonight, a multi-thousand dollar donation to one school will fund new computers. Find out where the money came from. Plus, a local organization participates in an international bird count. KTVO News at 6.30 starts right now. My name is Araceli Aguirre, and I chose Cargill because of the great benefits. This is Southeast Iowa's own KTVO, CBS 3.2 News at 6.30. Good evening, I'm Ashley Hoke, in for Jacqueline Schutte. Students at Davis County Middle School are getting some new technology. The middle school receives $7,500 from a $90,000 grant through the Davis County Community Foundation. Over 8,000 people in the county will benefit from the grant. The school doesn't have enough computers and technology available to the kids. Money from the grant will go toward a new computer cart with 30 computers for the students to use. Davis County Middle School Principal Brad Nelson says this is better than replacing what they already have. Really what this money means for the school is that we'll be able to upgrade in what we have as far as technology goes rather than just maintain and you know being able to replace old machines but actually an increase so that's that'll be huge for us. Nelson says the added technology will help give the teachers a boost which in return give the students a boost. Twelve other businesses and organizations in Davis County received money from the grant for new items or upgrades. Atumwa Water and Hydro is finishing up a two-year water re meter replacement and upgrade program. So far, there are 9,900 meters done out of about 10,000 meters in the city. They needed to be replaced because most were 20 years old or older. The new meters read water automatically instead of having to read each manually at each home. The upgraded meters also give specific feedback on water usage. Atoma Water and Hydro Management says that can be helpful if customers have questions about a big water bill. One of the big benefits we have with the meters is uh, it allows us to uh, interrogate the meter. So if a customer has a high usage and they're curious as to what might be happening, we can uh, take our handheld units and uh, uh, read the meter and come back to the office, uh, print out a graph and chart and shows the usage uh, by the hour or even by the 50 minute intervals. The replacements are done at no cost to customers. Wapalo County residents brought out their binoculars today and participated in the 115th Christmas bird count. It's the longest running wildlife survey in the nation. Participants joined members of the Wapalo County Conservation Board to count bird species in a 15-mile radius near Eldon this morning. They documented a variety of birds including mallards, bald eagles, Canadian geese, and even a few hawkeyes in the Hawkeye State. If you weren't able to make it out to the bird count today, there's still plenty of time to participate. Bird species can be counted at any time and location from now until January 5th. Give the Pioneer Ridge Nature Center a call at 641-682-3091 to report the species. Last year, the county counted 42 different species of birds. Atumwa residents had an opportunity to ask questions to Atumwa School Superintendent Davis Idle at his monthly listening post session. The main topic of the discussion was the school district's potential purchase of the vacant Nash Finch building. The school district plans to renovate the building and create a new district office and warehouse. The purchase was tabled at the last school board meeting to allow board members to review all of the details and price tags that come with purchasing the building. Idle says the listening posts are a great opportunity to answer the public's questions about big issues. It was a great opportunity today to get uh, um, have conversation with well-established people in our community who understand uh, finances and business and and uh, they've been here a long time and, and uh, they love a TUM one. They want to see the best for a TUM one. So it was a good conversation, just sharing some of the, the funding. The purchase of the building will be voted on at the next Ottumwa School Board meeting at 6 o'clock on Monday night at Evans Middle School. Iowa's unemployment rate dropped in November but remains slightly higher than the rate a year ago. Iowa Workforce Development announced Friday that the November unemployment rate was 4.3% down from 4.5% in October. The November 2013 rate was 4.2%. The agency says the number of unemployed residents dropped to 73,900 in November. The number of residents with jobs was nearly 1.64 million. Iowa's unemployment rate remained significantly lower than the national rate of 5.8% in November. Next on the broadcast, as other terror groups are making headlines, ISIS still remains a concern. Special correspondent Kai Jackson reports. The terrorist group ISIS has killed and spread fear across the globe. 
Yet other events in the world have seemingly taken ISIS off the front page. Special correspondent Kai Jackson reports experts say ISIS is propaganda continue to be a threat even though it may have slipped from the headlines. ISIS remains on the radar of those who track terrorist groups. Some experts say ISIS now controls a territory in Iraq and Syria large enough for four million people to call home. We track the truth to learn just how much ISIS has grown. In August, it's believed ISIS had some 10 to 20,000 fighters in its ranks, according to published reports. Though groups and their agendas vary, one estimate now puts the number of ISIS and jihadist fighters between 25,000 and 51,000. The Middle East Media Research Institute tracks how terrorist groups utilize media. Every day we see reports of ISIS gaining ground, perhaps overrunning military bases, expanding and consolidating its territory. But we also see reports uh, to the opposite effect of pushback. That language was echoed recently by former Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel, who spoke to a congressional committee. Since I testified before this committee two months ago, our campaign against ISIL has made progress. ISIL's advance in parts of Iraq has stalled. But stalled doesn't mean stopped. The Middle East Media Research Institute says ISIS has inspired lone wolf terrorists, radicals supporting ISIS ideology but acting alone. The institute points to the deadly parliament shootings in Canada and possibly the Sydney, Australia hostage situation as examples. Experts say firearms and explosives aren't the only weapons that ISIS has at its disposal. Equally effective, the group's ability to push propaganda through video and social media. ISIS absolutely relies on social media and on American social media companies in particular, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, to spread their message, recruit supporters, fundraise, and get their message uh, out into the world. Kai Jackson reporting. The Middle East Media Research Institute has pushed for social companies and the U.S. government to restrict the ability of terrorist groups like ISIS to use social media. Thanks, Troy. Coming up later in the broadcast, you may have seen caroling before, but have you ever seen surprise epic caroling? We'll show you that in a bit. Time now for a look at what's going on in the Ottumwa School District. The high school band received a generous donation to help fund their trip to Pearl Harbor in December 2015 from the high school kitchen staff. Instead of exchanging gifts this holiday season, 18 women who feed the district kids started a collection and voted on a school group to give funds to. OHS kitchen manager Becky Stout says they wanted to do something different to help out the students this holiday season. We will have your Iowa sports report presented by Cargill when we come back. We've got great video of a crazy chase, a naughty bear, and some epic caroling. Stacy Cohen has today's Take a Look at This. Take a look at this. Police in Iowa say a man set his own house on fire, went to a convenience store, and rammed his truck right through the front of the store. Surveillance cameras caught it from several angles, but he wasn't done yet. He then led police on a high-speed chase. They caught up to him in the next county. Take a look at this bear who might be on the naughty list. He checks out this stuffed Santa and then knocks him to the ground. California photographer Robert Martinez set up the toy Santa and camera just to see how wild animals would react. You may have had Christmas carolers perform on your lawn, but they probably didn't bring a 20-piece brass band. Family in New Jersey got a holiday surprise on Tuesday. A group called Improv Everywhere surprised five families that night with the moms acting as accomplices. <laughs> or take a look at this. I'm Stacy Cohan. And that's our broadcast for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can get all your local news, weather, and sports 24-7 over on our website, heartlandconnection.com. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.